has been blamed for many of our problems we face in our health, including that of diabetes, obesity, heart disease, and cancer, and especially refined sugar. On the other hand, we've been told that certain fruits, vegetables, can prevent cancer and these various diseases. What really is the truth? Now, let's look at a common fruit we all love, the mango, and compare it with a drink that many of us drink, or many of us have been forbidden to drink, Coca-Cola. 320 ml can of Coca-Cola actually has 34 grams of sugar. The mango, average size small mango, 45 grams of sugar. What about a small durian? Actually has 180 grams of sugar. In my 38 years as a surgeon, I've encountered many people who are confused. What is the truth about sugar? What is the truth about food we eat? What should we eat and what should we not eat? Many patients ask me, doctor, what should I eat? Now today, I want to dissect between fallacy and truth and share with us the truth about sugar. Now, there are many things to talk about in food. There's too much to talk about all of them. I'll just talk about sugar today. I also have an additional reason why I want to talk about sugar and especially about cancer. I myself was the first diagnosed case of Burkitt's lymphoma in 1964 in Singapore. So, what is it about refined sugar? Or what is it about natural sugar in fruits that makes them different? Or are they really different? First of all, all carbohydrates, including the various forms of sugar, whether refined or natural that we eat, are broken down to glucose before they can be absorbed by the body. In reality, the body doesn't care what sort of sugar it is. I have here, actually, real money, $10. Who wants this? The first one up here will get it. Hey, you didn't ask me where that came from. Was that dirty money? Was that earned by me? Did I pick it up? Did it go through the sewer? He doesn't care because it's real money. And that, is, my friend, is the same with sugar. Sugar is the currency of the body. Without glucose, as when I say sugar, I mean glucose as well, because all carbohydrates get converted to sugar before they can be absorbed into the body and used for all processes of the body. All body processes need sugar. Without sugar, there can be no transaction. Without money, there's no transaction in this world. So sugar is the currency of the body. For us to live, for us to work, for us to do anything, we need sugar in all the cells. Now, what happens? If we have, we have excess money, we save them in the bank. These are our reserves. What happens when we take too much sugar? It is stored in the body as a reserve, as fat. When we need it, we draw on it. And that's why we work, to have a reserve. When we are in need, we draw on it. A person with reserves can better meet the crisis than a person without reserve. Now, of course, some of us have too much reserves. That's another story for another day. In reality, if one is sick, we need to draw on our reserve, especially when we cannot eat. The body will then convert this reserve into glucose. Then the body can carry on with its transaction of whatever it needs to do. Build up new muscles, build up new antibodies, do the work that the body is meant to do. In the same way as our savings, we draw on them. Now, what happens if a person has cancer or a person has serious illness and he has no reserves, he has no fat? What does the body do then? What would you do if you have no reserves in the bank to draw on in a crisis? You then have to do, 
do away or sell even things that you really need. You may have to sell your house. In a person who is thin without any fat reserves, they use up their muscles. They convert their muscles to glucose because I said glucose is the currency of the body. You have to break your bank to do it. And that's quite sad. And that's why we see that a lot of patients who are sick and dying in hospital, they are wasted away. They've got no muscles and they can't mount a response to the cancer. In reality, we have been told that natural sugar is better because its glycemic index is the index which shows how much glucose you absorb two hours after a meal. But practically, this is not useful and in fact it's been called a scam because the most important thing is not what is absorbed at two hours but how much we take in. There's no difference in the caloric value between a whole bowl of brown rice or white rice. At the end of the day, all the thousand grains or whatever is in that bowl is absorbed by the body and built into reserves. So what is more important is for us to watch our weight, watch our disease index and not what is absorbed at two hours. Now, glucose is also the energy of the body. This meeting is not possible unless the young people that organized it use their energy. This meeting, this room is not possible except for the current electricity, the energy that runs through a building, giving us lights, giving us air conditioning. Glucose is energy. Glucose is actually life. Without it, we cannot survive. A friend of mine wanted to lose weight. He fasted overnight. He fasted morning breakfast. And he said, I'm going to overdo myself. I'm going to play a couple of rounds of tennis. He went to play tennis with his friend. After two rounds, he suddenly fainted and collapsed. The friends around him tried to arouse him. They couldn't get him up. But luckily, in the right frame of mind, they brought him to the hospital. The doctors did a test and said he's got very low glucose. What happens when the body is low on glucose? It becomes hypoglycemic or low glucose level. And that's what happened to my friend. But you know what happens if you continue in that state? If your brain hasn't got enough glucose, it shuts down. And after a period of time, which may just be a couple of minutes, the brain dies. We have seen patients who fasted too much, the brain is dead, they die. Glucose is energy, glucose is life. Now, but you say, we have heard that cancer cells feed on glucose. And Many people in the world now think that if we don't take glucose, we don't take carbs, we can kill cancer cells. I'm sure there are many of you here sitting who have friends or relatives that are doing this to try and kill cancer cells. Is this right? Well, this is a PET scan. A PET scan is a scan that we use in the hospital to detect cancer. Now, the reason we can use it is because cancer cells use a lot of glucose, as I've just said. And this PET scan will show up with bright areas where the cells are actively using a lot of glucose. And as you can see, the heart is bright, is red on the left-hand side picture, because the heart is actively working. But even brighter than the heart is the brain. The brain is the lightest, brightest organ you see on PET scan. What does that tell us? Well, cancer is a terrorist. And when cancer invades the body, it is like a terrorist taking hostage a whole household. Now, if a terrorist has come into a house and taken hostage the occupants, what will the police or the armed forces do? Will they say, let's stop all food, let's kill the, <laughs> the terrorists? No. What if, what if they do that? If they stop all food, the terrorists will then just eat the food that's stored in the house. Do you think they'll share it with the hostage? No. 
If there's enough food there, they might. But if there's not enough food, they'll take it for themselves. But what will the hostage do? They will die eventually before the terrorists will die. But if we give food, the hostages can grow strong. If there's opportunity, they can run away or they can overcome the terrorists. Same with cancer. A cancer patient should not starve himself because he's going to kill himself before he can kill the cancer cells. The cancer cells can always feed on the body cells, but what will the body cells feed on? I've seen so many cancer patients, they are not taking carbs, they're not taking any sugar, and in fact, they are wasting away, their muscles are wasting away because the body converts muscles to sugar to use for the body processes. We need to eat well so that our body can defend itself against disease. Cancer is a terrorist. But you say, recently, splash all over the newspapers of the world was that sugar, that sugary drinks, and in fact, fruit juices are associated with increasing risk of cancer. Now, notice the word associated. I want to show you just another association. This is a, a graph showing divorce rate in Maine, which is a state in the USA, and the per capita consumption of margarine. Does this mean that the more margarine you consume, the higher your risk of getting divorced? Now we laugh, because obviously it's not true, but it's associated. Now we blame sugar because we have been taught that it's associated. But association is not causation. So, who is teaching us these fallacies? It is what we read in the newspapers. It is what we read on the internet. It is what bloggers write. And who are these writers? Who are these people teaching us? A lot of them are people copying from other people. Some of them are young people. A lot of them have no medical experience. Some of them are teaching us things out of kindness, but out of wrong understanding. Others doing out of mischief. Others doing out of malicious intent or for financial reasons. And many have been led astray. So we have to be careful and distinguish between fallacies and facts. Now, but you said sugar, isn't it the cause of diabetes? Now, what actually is the problem with diabetes? A cell, an organ in a patient with diabetes has no access to the sugar, and that's why they develop problems in their brain, in their heart, in their kidneys, and so forth. Yes, the currency of the body is floating around, but they cannot absorb it to use it. So the problem in a patient with diabetes is not too much sugar. The problem is that he's unable to use the sugar. And when he uses insulin or medicine, he then absorbs the sugar and can use it. Now, before we go on, why do we need? By the way, that's my granddaughter. Why do we feed her? Why do we eat? We eat, first of all, for enjoyment. We need to enjoy our lives. Secondly, we eat because we want to, we want to absorb energy. And as I told you, sugar is energy. Thirdly, we eat to absorb nutrition. So if we cannot absorb something, is that food nutritious? Now let me tell you, carbohydrates, proteins are absorbed totally by the body, leaving no residue or very minimal residue. But dietary fiber or fiber, whether in fruits, vegetables, cereal, and so forth, is indigestible to humans. Animals which eat grass, herbivores, can digest fiber. Humans cannot. So actually, the real junk food is fiber because fiber is indigestible. All that happens when you eat fiber is it becomes feces. It makes your motion bulky. The bulkier, the bigger the feces, the harder to evacuate. We call fiber roughage. 
in common language. That tells you that fibre is more difficult to discharge because otherwise, our predecessors would have called them smoothies. In fact, there is actually no significant difference between vegetarians and non-vegetarians in dying from stroke, heart disease, cancer, or all other causes combined. This has been shown in many studies. Life is really about balance. It is not a problem with sugar. We need money, we need sugar in our lives. How much we need depends on our lifestyle. So let's balance our thinking. Let's divide between truth and fallacy. I've done my work here today. I've given you a little bit of what I think is important for us to defeat diseases in our life and to get over the problems we are facing if we do have cancer. And therefore, I think it's time for me to take My reward, which is my sugar intake now, to build up energy for the next phase of the afternoon. Thank you very much.